Hey everybody, it's me and it's late on a Monday night. I feel like a night owl. I know. And um, I just wanted to come in and do a reading. And I'm in my new house. And it's under renovation. While we, yeah, are in the house. Yeah, so it's kind of like do a room, live out of that room while you're working on the other rooms. Quasi live out of those other rooms. <clears throat> but, you know, hey, it's going to work out. So let's begin our evening here with our smudge. I've got, uh, there's a fan blowing. My husband is a little obsessed with air circulating. And we don't have all of the ceiling fans in yet, so this is like one of those little high-powered fans. And I'm like, oh, Lord. It's like a tornado blowing through. But, um, let's do our smudge. So, you know, you take the smudge, just go up to the screen just like this, and bring the smudge up. <clears throat> and even though... You yeah, really don't get smudged. I go, yes, you do. Metaphorically, you are getting smudged. Okay, Ben. That's Benny. He'll be quiet in just a moment. Come here, Ben. You want to be a part of the video? Come here. Oh, there. That's Benny. He's crazy. So, uh, let me smudge my mouth so that I speak with authenticity as well as integrity and truth and I'd like to clear my hands so yeah this is my new sacred space this well I mean I have my one in the city don't get me wrong but then I have this is where we've moved to in Anadarko. I live over by Indian City. I mean, I'm like thrilled to be here. I really like it. So we're going to use the Angels and Ancestors deck. I have a frog now. He lives in the front bed. My um, grandfather-in-law, who we inherited this house from, his name is Butch. So I just called the uh, frog Butch. He hasn't told me his name, so but I'm just going with Butch. So I have a frog in my front bed, flower bed. So I'm going to plant him some plants and just make a groovy spot for him. And we're using the Angels and Ancestors deck. So do me a favor, don't forget to love this video. Comment where you're watching from or something cool. Just comment. I love comments. And don't forget to share, subscribe, follow, all of that good, cool stuff. So that way you are kept abreast of the energy that's around us. Okay, this one's sticking up, so I'm going with that one. And, uh, you know, so your, you know, chance favors are prepared mine. So Labor Day is almost over, and that means, okay, all right, there we go, and that means that we get back to the grind, you know, technically Labor Day is like the end of summer, but I'm like, no, the end of summer is like September 22nd, and they're like, isn't it the 21st, and I'm like, it's the day after. And so let's see if there's anything else left to be said. Okay, I guess that's it. Okay, so, um, mm. Dang, my boyfriend's here. You know, manly. Alright, so, but uh, I'm kind of bummed out because manly's upside down.
Okay, so we're looking at him and he is upside down. So that is talking about a little bit of elbow grease and strut. And when I mean struggle, I'm not meaning like things not coming your way. It means you have to work for it. And that energy exchange is not always so easy. And this is saying, yeah, you're going to have to work a little bit for it uh, in this instance. Um, and I'm going to say that um, another thought that just kind of popped up is sometimes people don't respect the energy that you have or that you put forth when you're doing things. And um, so it kind of gets, I'm going to say, disrespected and overlooked. So, yeah, I'm like, I love to see him. Oh, my God, I love to see him. But he's upside down. Damn it. You know, that's my little... If I could have a boyfriend in the form of an oracle card, it would be this guy. Here, I'll just show it to you. Is he not just dreamy? I'm like, oh my gosh. But, you know, uh, anyway, uh, he's in a card, but that's still, that's my boyfriend. All right, and so what is our obstacle? Our obstacle, and I'm going to say... I'm laughing when I see this. Our obstacle, because it says be brave and honest. Okay, so our obstacle is is that we're such a ding-dang good person that we'll go ahead and do it. And, you know, um, I'm laughing because I'm thinking, you know, it's almost like that tithing thing. You know, if I can't, if I didn't tithe in money... I'm going to tithe in effort. I'm going to tithe in works. Uh, and that's what this card is talking about, that that's kind of our obstacle. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do it, regardless of being disrespected or dishonored on that, yeah, overlooked or whatever. It's kind of like being on that team um, that you have a project, and there's this one person that does not work on that project, but ends up being a mouthpiece, perhaps, in the presentation of that project and collects all of the reward, you know, or the acknowledgement. Oh, so-and-so did just such a perfect, wonderful presentation, and you're over here going, and I put it all together, and my name was never mentioned. That's what this card is telling me when we're looking at that in relation to the trader card being upside down. That, yeah, you probably get to do all of the work. You get to carry all of the burden. But, boy, you're going to be the martyr on the end. Now, our help card is the oracle. And the oracle always has something important that comes out of it. So when we're looking at the Oracle card, let me bring her up a little bigger, it's like just sit back, go ahead and go through some of that minutia, you know, kind of carrying the burden. It's going to be okay because what you're going to, you're going to receive something that's very important and significant while you care, you know, after or because of carrying that burden. So this is a ding-dang good outcome through something that could be some potentially like having to do a lot of junk work. Now, here's the thing is that you are, are you're going to have a little bit of battle of doubting yourself and doubting what you can do. Um discomfort, feeling um, not qualified or good enough to go through with something. But I'm like, uh, you're receiving something really good. So even though you don't feel like you're qualified or good enough for that, Somewhere in the universe, there is an entity, there is this energy, there is a vibration, a person, whatever, a team, 
that believes you can do this. It may be totally brand new territory for you, but they believe that you can accomplish those goals. So this is a really good... Uh, well, thank you, Scooter. That's very cool. Uh, so this is a really good... Yeah, your struggles, you're going to actually be rewarded and recognized you know when I'm seeing that wait for that important information there's something good that's coming up out of all of this and even though you don't think you're good enough for the good stuff they do you know the powers that be you know the um, uh, creators you know that birthed us you know through there um, believe that you have what it takes and on this and when I'm you know the Druid card is about holding space um, I, I really kind of look at this as being the medicine man and I'm like where the hell I don't, I don't have a little pointer here I know I'll use my Palo Santo so we see that he's holding a staff, and that staff has some feathers and some kind of fur, thinking probably like coyote. And then it looks like there's a crystal on the end of it. So when, oh, I know, don't tell anybody. Uh, so when I'm looking at this card and it's talking about holding space, I'm not getting so much about holding space for somebody else. I'm getting about holding space for yourself. And what do we do when we hold space? We're really kind of quiet. We just sit there and maybe do a little bobbleheading and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is going to be, my hair's a little crazy. It's very humid here in Anadarko for some god-awful reason. So, And my water is really hard, so I've got to like figure out my products to get my hair all bouncy again. But when we're looking at this Druid card, and it's talking about holding space, again, let me repeat, that is not holding space for somebody else. That is holding space for self. Hi, Sonia. How are you? Um, that is holding space for self. Sitting and chilling. You don't have to um, give reaction you don't have to respond to a lot of stuff. You just sit and kind of like let it play out. You're an Apache. I'm an Anadarko, so we're pretty close. Very cool. All right, so I'm going to love to give you this last card because this last card is really pretty meaningful. This last card is the Mirror Garden Guardian, and it's talking about reflecting looking at yourself metaphorically in the mirror. Now that also means looking at ourselves as in our spirit, our body, our mind, our spirit, and really doing some self-examination. So that's going to be a part of your holding space. Um, uh, Sonia, I'm actually going to, um, once my house gets a little bit more finished, I'm actually going to um, open up part of my house to see people here in this area um, earlier, like on Saturday afternoons through Wednesday. So it would be really pretty cool. Um, I notice that there's not a lot of people like me down here, I mean, that do what I do. So I'm like loving the idea of offering that. But, all right, so we know we're going to have um, a little bit of a uh, struggle, and it's like more of having to do stuff to make things happen as opposed to it just like, wee, magically appearing on a silver platter, which, I mean, I'm like, everybody loves that. Um, but this is saying, no, you're going to have to work for some of this stuff, and some of this stuff you are not going to be acknowledged. You're not going to be, and I don't want to say disrespected but you're disrespected you know you're like just like invisible when it comes to receiving any acknowledgement but you're gonna go ahead and do it because we were talking it's a little bit like a tithing you know um, well let me just you know take one for the team 
uh, kind of essence there and you do your business and um, it's this it's the in the city oh I know I'm like damn the water um, and it's just really all of it pays off okay all of your hard work pays off and you gain something out of there and you're back here going oh my god I don't know if I can do this am I you know am I good enough am I worthy enough am I strong enough am I smart enough am I whatever enough and even though you may not feel it again the universe is saying yeah you are totally worth all of this stuff I just need you to sit back and chill Hold space for yourself. Take time to reflect on who you are and where you're going and what you want to do. That's the energy coming in this week. And it's important. You know, I believe that chance favors a prepared mind. So if you kind of know or anticipate you're going to have to work a little extra hard, then you're already prepared in the mind and hopefully in the body and in the spirit so i hope you enjoy this is my first like reading on facebook live i've been doing the private readings i've got them on sale for like 25 bucks uh cash app venmo you can um text me at 405 549-3766 I do them on Google Meet. Um, I've got a cool little room that I use. You know, this is my backdrop right now. Just wait till my house is renovated, and it'll be so cool. Um, and you'll dig, and you'll, like, love the vibe here, because I'm, like, already digging it. I've got it envisioned in my head, and I'm like, I freaking love it. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm really excited. I'm going to start doing... Yes, I'm, I'm, I still have my office in Oklahoma City. And I am in the city every week, except for Thanksgiving. Um, I won't be there Thursday. But I come in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a foot fest on Friday um, where you can do either a foot detox or foot reflexology. Um, um, for a cash thing. So, yeah, no, I'll still be in the city. And you'll see me a lot more often on the Ding Dang Facebook Live. And I'm looking so forward to it. I'm, I'm really kind of excited because, um, believe it or not, I love doing lives. I mean, I just I have a lot of fun doing them. And I love doing readings. I like talking. Um, and I love teaching. Um, I'm going to do that on Friday night. Um, I'm doing... It's... Um, Cash, Cash App, or Venmo. Um, the oh, I did that. I did a foot detox and a reading for fifty. We can do that for fifty. I mean, normally that would be like fifty bucks just for the foot detox. So it's like a foot detox with a reading. I love it. That would be fun. I think I'll do that on Friday night. And then on Saturday, I'll do the reflexology. You're so awesome. Thank you for inspiring me, Tanya. I'm like, ah, gosh, I'm so blessed. Thank you. That's a good idea. And it's really kind of fun because, you know, foot detoxes are kind of boring. I mean, you know, that's why I do one-on-one -on -one and people go, damn, they're 80 bucks. And I'm like, you get me for an entire hour. And, you know, I'm pretty easy to talk me into some stuff. And it's not too hard to talk me into a reading or, oh, let's work with some crystals while we're doing this foot detox. You know, so I'm kind of like, you know, you get a good little deal there. Um, you know, whereas in most places you're sitting in a room, maybe with other people, but y'all are kind of like by yourself. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Friday day. Yeah, we could do that Friday day. I could do that Thursday day. Whenever. I can do that Saturday day. Yeah, just let me know and um, we'll fix it up. Text me. 405-549-3766. Um, but, yeah. 
I love, you know, so it's kind of like, it's really kind of easy to talk me into a lot of things. But, um, again, when I do those, oh, do those, they are cash. When I do my little discounts, oh, holding space again. Uh, so I guess I'm supposed to shut up. Hmm. Um, um, I, when I do discount things like that, um, oh, I know, um, uh, it is cash only or cash up or Venmo, though. I don't do it on my square. Yeah, no, oh, man. Anyway, I'm sure they're listening to me. No. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have a good evening. Um, I've been thinking about, because I've got this really cool tree out front, so I've been thinking about doing my Reiki, because I do Reiki every day, and I've been thinking, uh, again, I've been thinking about um, doing the Reiki um, on Facebook Live again. I love doing the Reiki. I mean, it's just a good way to clear your vibe every day. Hey, my phone number, and I'm a texter. Um, I, I, I think the phones carry cooties, so I don't like put it up to my ear. So I either have you on know, speakerphone or we're texting. Uh, my phone number is 405-549-3600. See how Benny, who was so loud in the beginning, now he's so quiet, sitting on the lap. I've got some really cool necklaces that I'll post up tomorrow. I'm, I think I got a picture of them on my phone. Um, you know, my remedy, the black cord remedies, I love those things. And it's really funny because um, you'll have something that's going on in your life, and you'll get... You'll come in the in my um, studio and you'll see those black cord remedies, and one of them will like jump out at you and you can't stop staring at it. And when you do that, that stone is calling for you, and there's something about that stone that will balance. So I always like to look it up because I don't have all that stuff memorized. I mean, some things I do. Um, I usually, when it comes to crystals. I tend to memorize the contraindications. Um, as in most of the time, you're going to know, you're going to be like, I really want that stone. Uh, you know, and, you know, like somebody will say, I really want a bloodstone. I really want a bloodstone. I want to work with a bloodstone. And the first thing I ask them is, how's your blood pressure? Because if you have high blood pressure, you do not want to use a bloodstone. So, um, with that in mind, so, you know, a lot of times um, I remember more about contraindications because it's like, what do I need to watch for as opposed to what it is. I know that sounds really strange, but I guess my mind is a little bit more about I would rather be careful with the stones than be, you know, willy-nilly and then end up carrying around a bloodstone and my blood pressure sitting at 190 over 110, you know, I mean, who wants to do that? So, I just kind of, like, keep yakking. So, let's do this. Let's do a, um, a dragon's blood. This is a sage bundle. That is, okay, so, um, green calcite is a good stone. And I have a really cool necklace, if you'll remind me about it, that I'll show you. That's a green calcite. Um, and green calcite's really good for helping to regulate that blood pressure. And when you're wearing it as a necklace, it's right there on your sternum most of the time, you know. And think, you know, and that's where we absorb through the skin. Um, the calcium has a lot to do with heart and cardiac function. And that's one of the major elements in the calcite, you know, the cows. So anyway, I've got a, uh, this is a sage bundle that was um, rolled in dragon's blood. And people, uh, when I close, uh, you know, it's been a really good session or a really good reading um, you take this dragon's blood or you've like done a really cool clearing in an area 
you know, maybe you used your your tuning forks and your chimes and beat the drum. That's what I do. Uh, then at the end, you use this, and it's dragon. It's a sage bundle, just like this, but it's rolled in dragon's blood. And you just smudge it. You smudge the area. So here, it's not burning very well. But remember, I've got that crazy fan. Me and my husband. So you take that and you, it's kind of like a little cherry thing there burning. And you let it burn. You know, you let it smudge a bit with it. Now, the funny thing about Dragon's Blood is it enhances. Okay, so if you're in a good mood and you're feeling really positive and the vibe is feeling really positive in the area, like right now it feels real positive in my house. Here we go, so don't forget to do this and bring that up. And you're using the dragon's blood. It's going to take that positivity and it's going to enhance it. So we'll say multiply it by a thousand. You know, I'm giving it a big number. Yeah, I'm thinking good, happy things because I'm using my little uh, dragon's blood. But if you're in a not-so-positive mood, you know, like a real negative mood, and, you know, crabby Appleton time, and you burn this, or you use dragon's blood, it is going to take that negative mood and multiply it by a thousand. Yeah, and then you're in a really negative mood, I'm probably going to make some bad choices. So, uh, always, only use dragon's blood when you're in a good place. Only use dragon's blood when you're in a good place. Because if you're not in a good place and you use the dragon's blood, it's going to enhance that, you know, uh, you know and enrich the negative vibe. And you'll just be in the middle of a bunch of chaos and um, and a mel of a hess, you know, a real true mel of a hess. Now, for a good quickie, you can always use a little Palo Santo. And I swear, um, people will go, oh my gosh, you can only use Palo Santo if somebody gave it to you. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's a sin to buy Palo Santo. It's a sin to buy White Sage. Okay, so tell me why they sell it at a powwow and they sell it to every, anybody. They don't ask you for your CDIB when they would sell the, you know, when natives are selling that. Please, let's get real. And then there are many tribes that harvest this from the forest floor or the jungle floor in uh, Peru, like in countries like Peru. Where it grow, where the um, Palo Santo tree grows, and that's how they feed their family is by harvesting it and selling it. So you are supporting a family, a tribe that harvests this off of the forest or jungle floor, and then they cut it up into the little sticks and blah 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 and sell it. That's how they feed their family. So, don't feel like you're culturally misappropriating anything when you buy a Palo Santo stick or you buy a white sage bundle. You know, come on. It's, it's like people want to get on, a, you know, some kind of funny high horse about it. And we're supporting, we are supporting Try tribal living. We are supporting, helping to support a tribe, and enriching, you know, the kids. You know, making sure the kids got, you know, food in their belly and some cool kind of roof over their, you know, head. You know, and then the same thing. There's a lot of Native American people uh, and tribes that cultivate the white sage, and then they turn around and they make bundles out of it and they sell it, and that's how they feed their family. So don't hesitate to utilize those. They're not, you know, where you can't be, you know, if you're not an Indian, you know, or not a Native American, you can't use white sage. That's bullshit, you know. Come on. You are a beautiful creation, a human being 
and we have every privilege to use utilize these you know it's kind of like well then we shouldn't be using frankincense because that's out of the middle east and that's really kind of reserved for them no but we have no problem using frankincense you know shish we use it in essential oils we use it in little candle scents and etc so it would be the same thing you know, because normally you didn't get a frankincense tree here in, you know, like Oklahoma. So, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this evening's um, reading. Um, I carry Palo Santo in the, uh, up in the studio, I carry Palo Santo sage. I think I've got some juniper um, and or some cedar. Um, I kind of use those um, when I do the personal smudgings. Um, I, you know, so I have a couple of sticks here and there of that because I normally like when I get my package, I'm the one using it, right? Um, but I do have that available in the studio. And then when I open up down here in Anadarko, um, see, is that not cool, Tanya? I do the same thing. I, I go and look up these companies and I look for companies that are um, Native American um, or, you know, ind you know indigenous um, or that they are like a family owned, something to that effect, that that's how they do their business. That's how we keep each other enriched. You know, I always preach about having a side hustle and, you know, and I tell people that, yeah, you might have your nine to five, but what's your side hustle? And you will be surprised how many people have started having these little side hustles in order to enrich their family life. And, and they get their, oh yeah, definitely. Um, and then they get their, their kids or their family in, into it. And it just really kind of comes into a, what I always feel like, um, you know, back in, the, back in the old days, how we did things in the old days. Um, here in Anadarko, I noticed that there's some empty lots, and one of them is, I can't, it's by some consortium um, that owns that land, and there's a building that's dilapidated, and it's kind of got the, um, you know, boards over the window, but I'm like looking at the land, and I'm like, man, we could have a, a flea market, we could have a buy, sell, barter place, you know, that we do once a month, and that people can bring their wares or bring their stuff and set up a table or set up a booth and you know and I'm like come on guys um, we've got land here that we can be utilizing for the good of our community even if we had a one you know um, a day that we had um, not a clothing drive but like a clothing giveaway um, you know, I'm like, get our community back together and where we're working, where we're bartering. And if it's like, hey, they're really good with this and I'm really good with that and we need to work on this and that, you know, hey, there we go. We've got, you know, things happening. Uh, people are going to live a better life. And when we are living a better life, we're a lot happier. Um, our families are more cohesive. Our un our community, we get unity in the community. Crime rates go down. You know, I'm like, there's a lot of good that happens in that. So, I mean, we can be a part of something great. That's always been my dream, is to be a part of something great. Time banks. What's a time bank? I've never, I'm like, um, I used to belong to one. Oh, is that kind of like, um, uh, I can do this and you can do that and we donate three hours of this? And, okay, just what you said. Okay, very cool. I love that. See, I think that's kind of cool because it was like, you know, there's a lot of people that are probably looking and going, man, I really can't afford, you know, going to get reflexology but they can do something that I need done then I'm like oh I don't know how to do that or I don't like doing that and uh, you know hey you want to barter this 
But the only bad part about that is that you also have to remember, because, I mean, bartering gets us a lot of things that we want. <coughs> but we still have to have some form of cash income. So I, I had to, like, because I used to barter a lot. And then I'm like, damn, I only, like, collected, like, X amount of money this week. I won't be able to pay the bills. So I, my husband was like, yeah, you got to cut back on some of that bartering. And I said, the goal to it, the goal to bartering is that you always, in essence, barter up something that can be, you know, that's going to have a, have a better value to it. And so, you know, I always wanted to like, you know, like people would talk about they start with a, a old bicycle. And they trade the old bicycle for something else. And then they trade that something else up for another thing. And then they end up, you know, went from a bicycle, they got a 1964 Mustang, you know. And I'm like, damn, that's pretty cool. And then they got a connection with that guy. Who's that guy? I can't think of his name. Um, he does the, he has a show on the History Channel. Um, he's in Vegas and he does the cars. And he's got the long hair. He's really kind of hot. Um, yeah, my husband thinks I'm just interested in cars. And I'm like, no, he's got good-looking guys on there, for Pete's sake. Um, sometimes you can... Yeah, I know. See, that's like the cool thing is score a really cool item. Or, you know, it's kind of like that luck of the... Um, I don't know, the luck of somebody where they go to a, a garage sale and they buy a painting for like three bucks. And then they have it looked at, and they find out it's worth like thirty five hundred, and you're like, "What the hell? That was my painting, you know." Um, you know, to me, that's the you know, that's my goal, that's my dream, is to be able to you know find that really cool find, you know, come in and just go, "Oh yes, this little piece. Oh my God, that's a thousand years old and worth X amount of money." And I'm like, "Man, I got that over at Goodwill for fifty cents." It's um. It's not the Pawn Stars, it's the, it's, um, calm down. It's the one about the cars, but they do, but those guys know each other. The Pawn Stars in the, I want to call him Cool Daddy, but I don't think that's his name. Well, my dogs are like starting to bark. I'm like, I really want to talk, but my dogs are acting like fools. I think they want to go on the O-U-T. If I say that word, they'll like start going crazy. So I'm going to uh, have to sign off and go take the dogs outside. It's kind of late, and so I don't want them keeping up my neighbors by barking. Peace, love, and harmony, and I will see you guys soon. Counting Cars, that's the name of it, Counting Cars, and they call him the Count. And he's, like, really hot. He's got long hair. I got a thing for long hair. I really love long hair, so it's kind of like, uh, peace and thank you again, Scooter. You're so awesome. You, like, made my day or my night. Talk to you guys later. They're starting to act crazy.